It's a different approach uh, where we've been talking about tax topics and from a theoretical point of view. Here's an opportunity to use a fictional case study and see how we not just bring concepts to life, but how we coordinate and work together as a team to service that client who is exposed to multiple jurisdictions. We're looking at a fictional case study with a family that's moving from the Philippines to Indonesia to Singapore and then to the US. So we, we got to the second stage of the journey for this family. So they now have two kids, a boy and a girl. So time has passed, they've enjoyed their life in Indonesia and they decided that they want to move to Singapore for two reasons. One, they want to they put the kids in school in Singapore and they have done well in terms of their investments across ASEAN and they want to manage those investments from Singapore. So before they exit the Indonesian tax system, what sort of advice would you be offering this family? So there's an obligation to register and notify the tax authority that you're going to leave and you need to declare a tax return for the year in which you, you depart. And I guess just like with the Philippines, if you have any Indonesian source income, it continues to be subject to withholding on its way to Singapore or wherever it is that, that you may be. There's no extra tax to worry about. What advice would you offer in advance a move to Singapore and the right way to set up in Singapore? So Singapore, along with Hong Kong, to become quite attractive for, for family offices. That could perhaps be the most efficient potential structure to aid their, their move to Singapore. It works not just from an immigration point of view, but uh, particularly from a tax perspective as well. Uh, I mean, generally speaking, even without a family office, Singapore does not tax uh, dividends and uh, income that arises from outside uh, of Singapore. Not taking advantage of, of what MES has offered and instructed as a family office. What, what are the specific tax incentives? Sometimes people just look at the headline tax rates and they don't look at what we would call in our profile taxes. So like the hidden costs or the hidden compliance costs of a jurisdiction. So, you know, the other excise duties and the cost of, you know, bringing kids to Singapore is it's not going to be cheap. But in terms of the family office structure, yes, there are tax benefits, but the compliance costs, again, is, is not minimal. You have to, of course, register, but you also have to retain certain professionals to, to help you manage the family office structure and being compliant with MES rules. So, yes, you do get the tax benefits, but the tax benefits come at a cost. That's a, a point with no tank. It's, it is an easy move to make because Singapore, like Hong Kong, is such an attractive jurisdiction. So, you know, minimal planning is needed. And in, in the case of the family office structure, it seems to be like a, a turnkey solution to families similar to the one in which we retain to advise this fictional family.